Hey guys, we are officially in our new unit, which is biochemistry, which is studying the chemistry of life. So we're going to get into some um, details today that require you to be familiar with the terms that are on this screen. So we're going to real quickly review some sort of chemistry vocab. You don't need to write this down, but I am going to use these terms a lot, so it's important to know what they mean. So we're looking at biochemistry. We know bio means life. Chemistry is the study of matter. So biochemistry is looking at the chemical makeup of living organisms. Atoms are the building blocks of matter, and matter is anything that takes up space or has mass. And remember, we, we learned that atoms um, are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. They look like this. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Electrons are orbiting around the nucleus. Protons are positively charged. Neutrons have no charge. Electrons are negatively charged. I'm going to use the term elements a lot. Elements are those pure substances that cannot be broken down. So think about your periodic table of elements. So elements are things like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. Okay, that's going to be important today. And then the term molecules is when you have two or more atoms that are joined together with a chemical bond. And that word is going to be super important today because our topic that we are covering, covering in today's video lecture are the four biological macromolecules. So the macromolecules that are going to be really important to living organisms. And we're going to talk about four things for each macromolecule. They're building blocks their functions, uh, the examples, both food and non-foods, and any additional important information. Your notes organizer for this video lecture looks a little bit different than it normally does. You've got a big graphic organizer on the front, and then you've got this matching section on the back with a word bank. You do have to complete both sides of that organizer in order to be able to use your notes on the homework check. Keep in mind, on the front, you sort of can take notes in however way you want, but by the time you come to class, this should be pretty full, okay? Try and put as much information down as you can in these boxes right here. So let's talk about what macromolecules means, and this is gonna go in the middle part of your um, notes organizer. Okay, so macromolecules, macro means large, so we're talking about large molecules found in all living things. These are also known as polymers. The word part poly means many, so these are large molecules made up of many somethings. So what are those somethings? They're made up of many monomers. Okay, so the monomers are these smaller repeating subunits that add together to make up the polymer, the macromolecule. So in other words, monomers are the building blocks of polymers. So think about a building, okay, that would be your macromolecule, your polymer. Every brick would be your monomer. You put together lots of bricks to make a large building, right? That, that's our macromolecules. All, the, all of these biological macromolecules are what we call organic molecules, which means they contain the element carbon. Carbon is the element essential for life. Okay, so all of these, the common theme in all organisms is that they all have the element carbon, from bacteria to the most advanced animals, humans, okay? So what are the four biological macromolecules that all living things have then? We're going to be looking at the four biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And again, here's a good visual because I know it's, uh, it's hard for students to understand this sometimes. A monomer is a subunit. So each one of these is a monomer. We put them together and we make up the polymer. Okay, so polymer is made up of many monomers. So these are all polymers, the four biological macromolecules. Now you guys are, are lucky today. You get a little peek into my life because I'm, I'm doing this during my um, lunch period. So you're going to get to see a little bit of what I have for lunch today. Try and remember at least three things that I have for lunch today and there may or may not be a bonus question tomorrow during your homework check if you can remember at least three things that I have for lunch. So the first biological macromolecule that we're going to talk about today are carbohydrates. And you have probably heard of carbohydrates before. Carbs are bad. Carbs are good. So let's talk about what is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is sugar. Okay, when you hear carbohydrates, think sugar. So the building blocks of carbohydrates are the most simplest form of sugar, which is called a monosaccharide. The word saccharide means sugar in Greek. So a monosaccharide is one sugar molecule. So you put together lots of sugars to make carbohydrates. Does that make sense? So an example of a monosaccharide would be like a glucose sugar molecule or a fructose sugar molecule. So you put those together to make up your carbohydrates. Now, again, you've heard carbs are bad, carbs are good. Well, you gotta have at least a little bit of carbs, even if you limit them in your diet. Um, you have to have carbs because carb carbohydrates are your body's main source of energy. 
Now, there are simple carbs and there are complex carbs. Simple carbs or simple sugars provide you with fast-acting energy. That would be like the carbohydrates that are found in fruits. Okay, so they, they break down quickly because they're very simple. So you have a soccer game in the afternoon, you eat an apple in the morning, by the afternoon game, it's going to be giving you energy. Complex carbs or complex sugars, also known as starches, have many more sugars put together. So they're going to provide you with longer lasting energy because it takes your body longer for it to break down. They're more complex. There are more sugars put together. So that would be like um, the starches that are found in potatoes and in pastas. So people who are marathon runners, they will carbo load the night before on like pasta or some sort of heavier starchy dish like that so that by the time they're running their marathon the next day, the, the pasta is providing them with energy. So carbohydrates are your main source of energy, but they do have other functions. Um, they are found in the cell walls of plants. So that it's called cellulose. That is used for structure and for support. But again, carbohydrates are going to be your main source of energy. So foods that are full of carbohydrates. Well, you have foods like grapes. Okay, so that's something that I have for my lunch today that have your simple sugars. Um, then you have foods like celery that are full of that cellulose that I was talking about. That's going to be a more complex carbohydrate. And then you have, you know, your grains and your pastas, um, your fruits, vegetables, your raw sugar, your raw honey, potatoes. Those are all going to be foods full of carbohydrates. Okay, some additional information about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are composed of three elements, and I want you to remember carbo cho. So cho are the element symbols to remember. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, C, H, and O. Those are the only elements that make up, this is a starch down here. Those are the only elements that make up carbohydrates. Now, some additional information. Remember, monosaccharide are the building blocks, so one sugar. If you put together two sugars, that's called a disaccharide. Makes sense, mono means one, so monosaccharide is one sugar. Disaccharide, di means two, so it's two sugars. Like the table sugar, raw sugar that you would put um, in food to bake with, that is a disaccharide. Lactose and milk, that's a disaccharide, two sugars put together. If you put together lots of monosaccharides or many monosaccharides, it's called a polysaccharide, say many sugars. Okay, these would be your complex starches, your glycogen, your cell cellulose found in uh, vegetables, for example. Okay, complex polysaccharides. All right, so moving on, we've done carbohydrates. Now let's talk about lipids. When you hear lipids, I want you to think of fats. Okay, Paula Deen loves her lipids. So unlike the other macromolecules, lipids don't have a true repeating subunit, but they are all made up of the same parts. So they're all made up of triglycerides. And triglycerides are composed of these things right here. A glycerol, which would be like this part right here, and then fatty acid chains. So this together would be a triglyceride. A lipid is going to be a long chain or group of triglycerides put together. Okay. So again, fats we've heard of. Fats are good, fats are bad. There are healthy fats, there are unhealthy fats. Why do I need fats in my diet? You need at least some fats in your diet because lipids, are your, their primary function is to store energy. So you definitely wanna have energy stored up in your body. Now because lipids are nonpolar, and we'll talk about what that word means, but lipids are nonpolar, it means they don't mix with water, which makes them really good for cre preventing water loss and creating barriers. So for example, your cell membrane, which is in charge of creating a barrier for all of your cells, a really important part in your cell membrane is lipids. Okay, the outside layer of plant leaves is called a cuticle. It's full of wax, which is a lipid. Um, it, it, prevent, it makes a barrier around the, the plant leaf. Honeycomb in a beehive, that's full of lipids. And then insulation, right? That is um, blubber in animals that is a fat. So it provides them with insulation like this walrus here when temperatures are cold. So lipids do have lots of functions, but primary function is going to be to store energy. So then what foods are full of fats? And again, some of these are healthy fats and some of these are more unhealthy fats, but butter, of course, your oils, olive, vegetable, peanut oil, avocados are full of healthy fats, nuts are full of healthy fats, um, cheese, and you've probably heard of steroids and cholesterol. Those are lipids, those are fats. So in my lunch, um, I have some peanut butter, so the, there are definitely healthy fats in peanut butter. And I do like to have dessert with my lunch almost every day, but I have some chocolate-covered grapes, some dark chocolate-covered grapes. 
So there's definitely some fat in the, in the chocolate in this little dessert, but not that much and I only eat a few, okay? So don't judge me. Okay, then some additional information about lipids. Again, composed of the same three elements as carbohydrates. Cho, so lipids, cho. Uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So here's that picture from earlier, that triglyceride. You can see carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They are what's called hydrophobic, which we just talked about. They don't mix with water. Hydro means water, phobic means fearing, so that just means they don't mix with water, they don't dissolve with water. And lipids can be solid or liquid at room temperature. So solid, um, typically are full of what's called saturated fats, the more unhealthy fats, which means they are saturated with only single bonds. And we'll talk more about what single and double bonds are. But then fats that are liquid at room temperature are typically unsaturated fats, so you're more, typically you're healthier fats. And unsaturated means that they, are, they have at least one double bond in their molecular makeup. All right, so moving on, our next biological macromolecule are proteins. Okay, you've heard of proteins before. The building blocks of proteins are what's called amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids. And here's the list here of the amino acids. Your body can only make about 10 of those 20 amino acids. So you need all of them. But where do you think, if your body can't make all 20, but you need all 20, where do you think you're going to get the other 10, also known as essential amino acids, from? you're gonna get it from your food. That's why it's so important to eat foods that are full of proteins because you need to break down those proteins in order to get the amino acids that your body can't make. You need them, you can't make them, you gotta get them from your food. Okay, so why? Why do we need proteins? Why do we need to eat foods that are full of proteins? Well, proteins are involved in a crazy number of functions and processes within your body. They're used for structural support, they're used for building muscle, they're used for communicating signals between cells, Write this down, there's a special type of protein called enzymes that are used in speeding up chemical reactions, and we'll talk more about those. They're used in controlling the growth of cells, okay, cell division, so lots and lots of functions for proteins. Foods that are full of proteins, meats, eggs, nuts, beans, fish, cheese, milk, um, you've probably heard of hemoglobin in your blood before, insulin, those are examples of proteins. So in my lunch, again, my peanut butter has some proteins. Um, but I also had some hummus with my lunch, and hummus is a really good source of protein. Okay, some additional information of proteins. I want you to remember chan. So we had cho, cho, now we have chan. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. This right here is the amino group. Okay, so the amino, the nitrogen, makes it a protein, right? They're made up of, um, of amino acids. So about 15% of your total body is actually made up of proteins. Your hair, your skin, your nails are all made up of proteins. Amino acids are held together by these special bonds called peptide chains. So sometimes you will hear proteins called polypeptide chains, meaning many peptide bonds. So joining the amino acids, so many amino acids make a protein. Proteins are made by these structures in your cells called ribosomes which you may or may not remember from middle school. And then this is super important, so write this down. The structure of a protein is what determines its function. If you change the structure, you change the function. That's going to be especially important when we talk about enzymes. Okay, then last up, we have nucleic acids. Nucleic acids um, are made up of these smaller repeating units called nucleotides. And a nucleotide consists of three parts. We'll talk more about this when we study DNA, but just for now, know that a nucleotide is a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base together. So you repeat those three things over and over and over, and you get nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, okay? Deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is an example of a nucleic acid. The function, think about the function of DNA, is to store and transmit genetic information. Okay, so DNA or nucleic acids are composed of five elements. So we had cho, cho, chon, now we have chomp, chomp. So kind of like chomp, but with an N. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Remember, a nucleotide has a phosphate, so we're, el we're adding the element phosphorus here. And DNA is double-stranded, it's only found in the nucleus. RNA is single-stranded, it's found throughout the cell. We will talk more about that later. What you really need to know is that nucleic acids are responsible for carrying genetic information. So on this slide, um, there is a nutritional pie chart and there's a nutritional fact diagram. I want you to think about these two questions right here and see if you can answer them in your head. Okay, that's all we have today. I hope you're having a great day. Bye.